there's this one question that people are always asking themselves. Why didn't Adam and Eve die immediately after they ate uh, the forbidden fruit? And uh, most people are always arguing and saying, uh, no, you see, they died. No, they did not die, blah, 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 and all those stories. And uh, I want us to debunk this and see exactly did Adam and Eve die? And if they didn't die, what really happened? Why? Because the Bible had said one thing, that when you eat, you will surely die. So why did they not die? Now, first and foremost, let's see that verse. Uh, Genesis 2.17, the Bible says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So if the Bible has talked about you will die, then why did we not see Adam and Eve fall down and they died there and then? It is basically because of one thing. God showed them grace, okay? Now, people say that, oh, you see, back in the, those times there was no grace. Let me tell you, God has always had grace. And that's why even uh, we see Noah. Noah, what did uh, the Bible say about Noah? It said that Noah found grace with God. So, grace was there. So, what is grace? Grace is getting what you don't deserve. These two people, they, they deserved to die because they have just eaten from the fruit uh, from the tree, a uh, fruit from the tree which the uh, God had said don't eat from it. But now God is giving them what they don't deserve. Now what is exactly did God give these two people which they did not deserve? Now I want to break this down for you so that you can understand. Now in Genesis, uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis, um, let me show you this one, Genesis 3.21, it shows us that kind of grace which God gave them and what actually God did to them. See, they have eaten the fruit. Now, <laughs> look at what God is doing. And to Adam and also his wife Eve, of course, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. Now, why is God clothing them? He's basically... They have understood, oops, we are naked. Oops, we are already sinful. We have done sin. And instead of God striking them there and then to die, he clothed them. He basically gave them what they did not deserve. This is what we call grace. And now, if they, God made coats of skin, these are skins from an animal. So it means God himself, he killed an animal. He shed blood of an animal so that he could be able to cover their sin. Are you seeing the point? So God atoned for their sin using the blood of an animal. And uh, of course this one is very well explained that the only way you can be able to atone for your sin is using blood. And this one is explained very well by the story of uh, Cain and Abel. Let me show you. Do you remember Cain and Abel? What they did? Let me show you so that you can understand why the blood is very important to atone for sins. Let me show you. Now, when we see Genesis, back again to Genesis um, 4 uh, from verse 3, let me show you what really happened with Cain and Abel. It, the Bible says, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So Cain is bringing fruit. Fruit is what? His own labor, what he has worked in the field. This is the, his works. You see why you cannot be saved by works? I want you to see this. He brought the fruit of the ground as an offering unto the Lord. And what did Abel do? And Abel, he also brought all the first links of his flock. You see, Abel is bringing his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Why? Because he brought the flock to God and he killed an animal and made a sacrifice. Blood was shed. But Cain brought his works. You see, there's a difference between bringing your works and bringing blood. Because why? And see, but unto Cain and to his offering, God had no respect. And Cain was very wroth. Cain was angry. Why is God refusing my works? But God is not interested with your works. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why are you wroth? Why are you angry, Cain? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, 
if you came, you did well. If you gave a blood sacrifice, see, thou shalt not be accepted. Will you not be accepted if you gave blood as I instructed? And if you do not well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and you shall rule over him. Now, you see why the blood is important? But Cain did not understand this because he gave his works. But Abel, he gave blood. Now, why is the blood important? Why is the blood important? Leviticus 17, 11. Let me show you why that blood had to be important. Because the Bible says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it unto you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Are you seeing this one? Are you seeing atonement? Let me show you something here. Let me show you something here. What exactly is this atonement that the Bible is talking about? What, what is to atone? Atone. Let me look at that word. To make atonement. Okay. Uh, atonement. What exactly is this atonement? To cover. Atone means to cover or to purge. Uh, of course, atonement. Make reconciliation. There's no way you can make reconciliation with God without the blood. You can't make reconciliation with God without the blood. It's really important for you to atone using the blood. So that's why God himself, he made courts of animals to Adam and Eve. So that he could cover their sin. Are you seeing the point here? So the only way you can cover your sin is through the blood. Why? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. And why is the blood important? Because blood, it means, if I remove blood from your veins, I have killed you. And if I've killed you, why should I kill you? Why should you die? It is because of one thing. You remember what the Bible says? The wages of sin? The wages of sin is what? If you sin, the wages of sin is death. It's death. So Adam and Eve, they sinned and they deserved to die. But then, if another blood which was innocent could have been shed for them, then they could have gotten what they did not deserve, which is life. But then remember one thing, this is not eternal life. They're only covering their sin for a while. They're only covering their sin for a while. And that's why we see Moses also, he gave the law which uh, people had to shed blood of an animal to atone for their sins. Uh, when somebody sins, they had to make sure that they do sacrifice. Okay? Let me show you. They had to make a sacrifice of an animal. You see? They, he had to make a sacrifice. And he told people that you guys, when you sin against God, make sure that you do a sacrifice of an animal. Now, why was this sacrifice important? Why did you have to shed blood of an animal? To atone for sin. To cover your sin. But remember one thing. It's not possible... It's not possible to cover the sin using 100% to remove the sin. It's only covering the sin for a while. Until you sin, you go back again. You go and cover again your sins. You sin again, you cover sin. You sin again, you cover sin. But now, why is, was it not impossible to cover the sins once and for all? Why was it not possible for the blood of animals to cover sin once and for all? Let's see, Hebrews. Hebrews 10, verses 4. This one explains why it was not possible to cover sins completely with the blood of animals. The Bible says, For it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. It was only covering, 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 but it was not taking away the sin. So how can we take away that sin completely and we be able to, to say, absolutely now there is no sin. Now, let's see. Hebrews. Hebrews uh, 9, 13. 
9, 13. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, yes, it's covering the flesh not to die at that time, how much more, see, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? If this blood of bulls and goats was covering sin, was covering only the flesh, how much more will the blood of Jesus, our Savior, our Creator, cover? Will He just cover or will He just take away the sin? Will He cover or will He take away the sin? Let's see. When Jesus came and was about to be baptized, John the Baptist saw Him coming. Okay? He saw Him coming and he saw Jesus. And then there's something that John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus coming to be baptized. The next day, John sees Jesus coming to him, and he said, Behold the Lamb. Are you seeing? Why is John the Baptist calling Jesus the Lamb? Like the other animals? Like these ones? Like these lambs? Why is John the Baptist calling Jesus a Lamb? Now, let's see. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. So, Jesus is going to take away the sin. He's not going to cover the sin, but he's going to take it away. He's going to take the sin away. And this one explains why salvation is all after believing. You believe that Jesus took your sin away. Now you're clean. Now you're absolutely 100% clean. And you cannot be able to perish. Because now Jesus has taken away your sin. And that's why Jesus said after he died... Do you remember what Jesus said? Do you remember when Jesus died? When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. What was finished? The payment of sin. Jesus had taken away the sin of the world. So now, how can I know that my sin has been taken away? Because now, if he has taken the sin of the world... He has made everyone holy. Then why are some people going to hell still? And he took away the sin. It is because of one thing. The Bible says you have to believe that he took your sin away. 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 1. This is the gospel. When you understand this and you believe this, then you are saved. Then the sin that you had from Adam, because you're from the seed of Adam, is taken away from you. And now you will enter heaven. See what Paul is saying here. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. This is the gospel. What is gospel? Good news. Which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. So this is where you stand. You're standing in this gospel. You're standing in the fact that Jesus did something for you. He was the lamb and he took away your sin. By which also you are saved. You see, if you believe this gospel, then you are saved. You know 100% you are sealed and sanctified. You are ready for heaven. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Why is Paul saying you keep in memory? Because unless you understand what Jesus did at the cross, you can never be saved. How do you keep something in memory? You only keep something in memory if you understand it. You remember in school, your teacher could tell you, please do not cram that formula. Understand the formula so that it can be in your mind. So that the time of the exam, you can remember. But if you cram, you will never understand. You have to keep in memory what I preached unto you unless you believed in vain. There are people who believe in vain because they have never really understood what Jesus did for them. You have the Bible there, but you don't understand it. You have to keep in memory, understand what Jesus did. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received. Paul is telling us, I don't give you something new, I give you what I received. And remember Galatians 1, 11 to 12, it says, This gospel I received it of Jesus as a revelation. How? Look at that word. 
I delivered unto you first that which I also received. How? That Christ died. How did he die? By shedding his blood as an atonement for your sins. He became the lamb and he took away your sin through his blood which was innocent. He shed it for you. How? That is how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You may ask, why according to the scriptures? The scripture is the word of God. You were not there when he was dying unless you have lived 2,000 years ago. But you have to believe the scriptures. Why? Because the Bible tells us, Blessed are those who believe, yet they have not seen. Because Jesus did this for us. Do you see why Adam and Eve, they did not die that time immediately? But of course, if they could not have accepted wearing those clothes, then they could not have covered their sins. If they could not have continued doing covering their sins over and over and over and over, it could have mean, meant they die. And death is not only the physical one. There is a spiritual death. You go to hell. You will die in hell in your sins. And you go to hell where you will die forever. Death means you will be in separation with God and you're going to be judged and you will burn in hell if you don't cover your sin. And uh, if you want to cover it with the blood of lambs, come on, this one can never take away your sin. You just go, you sacrifice, you go back, you sacrifice, you go back, you think something wrong, you sacrifice, you... Be it cannot take away the sin of the world. The only way you can take out your sin is by believing that Jesus died for you and he shed his blood for you. Hope it's been a blessing. Hope it's been a blessing to you.